Good morning, dear friends. Thank you for joining me today. Have you ever imagined a world in which there is no pain and suffering? One's first reaction to this question tends to be, oh, wow, what bliss. But even more thought provoking, have you imagined a world without joy? And our response to this is probably mostly, oh, wow, what hell. But if, if one thinks about it, a world without either of these two sources of emotion provides us with a very bland, dull and senseless world. In fact, a godless world. So in today's message and prayers, I want to touch on the importance of these two extremes of motion, emotion in our lives and how God uses them to give meaning and motivation to our lives. The reading I have chosen today is from Jeremiah 17, verses 7 to 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. These verses from Jeremiah send us one of so many very positive messages about the nature of our beloved triune God and what we are assured of if we have faith and trust in him. But let me first return to the emotional continuum that God has created within us from the one extreme of profound sadness to the other of profound happiness or joy. As I said earlier, if God had created us with the emotional capacity to only experience neutral emotions, how horribly dull life would be. It would be rather like viewing the world through a grey, white and black lens without colour. In my younger years, when I had more time and energy, I spent some of my free time involved in painting, sculpting and writing poetry. And I always found that I was most creative either when I was undergoing some form of emotional pain or intense joy. I'm sure many of you can relate to similar experiences in your lives. So it is easy to understand how a loving God such as ours would create contrasts of joy, happiness and love. But why did he create the emotional contrasts of pain, sadness and grief within us? Many say God didn't create these. I would tend to disagree. They are not really emotions we would associate with someone who loved us. And there are many books written on this topic and there are even more people who abandon God as a betrayer when they experience extreme pain and grief in their lives. This is so sad both for them and for God. I'm not going to try and go into details about the whys in the message of grief and other emotional pain. It is far too complex a subject to cover in an eight minute message. But mostly Jeremiah's words provide us with an example of the wonderful support that God provides us with during these terrible times, especially and most importantly, when we put our trust in him. But to briefly touch on one of the, one of perhaps the most important reasons that God allows us, he doesn't give us, he allows us to experience the negative emotions on this continuum is that it would be very difficult for us to demonstrate sympathy, empathy and compassion towards someone who was in emotional pain if we ourselves had not experienced similar pain. 
it would be impossible for us to appreciate the physical and emotional agony that Jesus endured building up to and during the whole process of crucifixion if we ourselves had not experienced some forms of physical pain, emotional humiliation and deep hurt in our lives. Thus, while we will never be able to conceive and appreciate the full extents of Jesus' agony, it allows us to gain insight into the extent of God's love for us, especially when we add to this the sacrificing of one's own child to such agony in order to allow future generations of believers the passport to an everlasting life. Most, if not all of us, have and will continue in the future to experience emotional pain and grief resulting from the common tragedies of life. But in today's world, the opportunities to experience great joy and happiness have been sadly dampened by the threats of a world blighted with a pandemic and the impending uncertain consequences of global warming and global unrest. While there are many Christians in the world, there are also many who do not believe in Christ as God's Son and our Saviour, and many others who don't believe in God at all. So it is not difficult for us to become disillusioned and to fall into the trap of negative emotions, such as depression, anxiety, panic, and intolerance of each other in today's times. So let's return to the scriptures from Jeremiah. In these introductory verses, we are assured that if we love and trust and have confidence in our God, then the rewards, even in the darkest of times, far exceed the punishment we receive from negative emotions. I don't know about you, but I am passionate about trees. They symbolize so beautifully for me the glory of what we should become if we are rooted in God. Each has its own particular beauty as created by God in his image. They stand green and powerful, reaching up to the heavens in praise to their creator. But they are also firmly rooted in the soil of faithfulness, the word of God, and trust in him. They may experience the discomfort of heavy winds and the thirst of droughts, but most importantly, they are able to withstand the onslaught of the evil one when others around them who are not so rooted may be blown over or wilt in the drought of faithlessness and hopelessness. But most importantly, trees rooted in God never fail to bear fruit that provides sustenance for so many other living creatures around them. So let's pray. O oh, beloved God, thank you that we were created so perfectly that you have given us the opportunity through our senses and emotions to experience the full extent of and variety within your creation. And in so doing, to be exposed to the mountain tops of joy and the valleys of despair. In this way, you have created in us a growing understanding of and empathy towards those around us who may be suffering and in need. May this gift become ever stronger within us, Lord. Thank you that through our growing understanding of the wonder of you and your love for us, we become more rooted in our faith and so are able to stand up firmly against the threats and challenges that life throws at us without falling and succumbing to them. May we become more and more beautiful to those who gaze upon us as we reflect your glory through our words and actions so that they too may desire to learn where that inner beauty comes from and to reach out and reap its rewards. Most importantly, beloved Lord, may your glorious role model, Jesus Christ, and the richness of your word become the compost upon which we bear fruit so that we can, can through you, feed others through the fruit we bear. We ask this all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace How sweet the sound So much has changed in our world lately. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Jesus.